this is an interview I'm looking forward to. Um, I did some GoPro things, um, and there's some new things to introduce here. Um, first, the video, correct? Is that, that's correct. First, the video. Well, welcome to the Code Stage. We're glad you're here. We're so happy to have you, but before we waste any more time, let's get right to it. How much longer can you be CEO? And also, what about these growth issues? Wall Street is extraordinarily concerned about your leadership. And, and when they're not concerned about your leadership and your growth issues, they're concerned about your monetization. I mean, the ad buys look good for a while, but now they seem like they've petered out. Sources close to publishers think you're just somewhat incompetent in well, delivering. Well, they're also concerned about your social strategy. Absolutely. Do you have a social strategy? Uh, and, and while we're talking about that, you're, you're China's, your China problems, you've got labor issues, you've got, you've got environmental issues in China, and I think also in India now as well, right? And also, there's that sexual harassment trial that's going on concerning you. And those emails do not do you any favors. I mean, I'm probably very angry at Sony, but th you wrote that stuff, and you've got to deny, you can't deny it. Which brings us to the issue of you being able to not defend against hackers. What about your consumers? And your favorite color. What is your favorite color? No, really, it's green. We have heard that sources said it's green, not gray, as you're saying. Look, the audience is going to be able to ask as well, but why not just tell us right now? And the question is, are you gluten-free or not? How do you respond? Are you vegan? How do you respond? <sighs> so we were, uh, we're going to introduce uh, Nick Woodman with his new product, Nick of GoPro. Come on out. <laughs> Well played. Thank you. Uh, are you vegan? No. Okay. All right. Um, so let's just get to the obvious. You have a new product. <laughs> we do. And we do. we're this in the business be of coming out with fun new stuff. And, okay. Um, I, I'm right now riveted by your hair, but I'm going to try to focus on your product. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. here we go. All right. Uh, well, this is, uh, we haven't come out with this yet, but this okay. is a um, six camera spherical array that uh, we're working on. It's actually six Hero 4 cameras mm -hmm. combined in a mounting accessory that'll make it easy for people to um, combine six GoPros to capture spherical photo and video content. Okay, and what do you, what's the reason for this? Explain what you're trying to do here. Well, we've been playing around with this concept uh, for a few years now, multiple combination of uh, uh, multiple GoPros to enable new forms of capture. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a dual hero system, which is a product that we commercialize that allows you to take two GoPros, combine them to capture stereoscopic 3D footage or capture photo and video simultaneously mm -hmm. at very high rates and high resolution. Um, we've done arrays up to 50 cameras in a linear array to do um, bullet time um, matrix type right. effects. Uh, we didn't commercialize that, it's just more for um, R&D purposes and demonstration of our tech, camera syncing technology. And then uh, when Facebook um, dropped the gauntlet mm -hmm. and acquired Oculus, um, it sent a message that, okay, there's going to be heavy development and investment in virtual reality. Right. And we recognized that all of the development we've been doing over the past few years with multi-camera lends itself extremely well to spherical capture, which mm -hmm enables the type of content uh, format you need for VR. Mm -hmm. VR is going to be popular just based on gaming alone. It'll be mm -hmm. a successful business platform, but, um, or a successful business because of the gaming industry. But for VR to be appealing to non-gamers, it's going to need content. It's going right. to need photo and video content, and GoPro's position no, better than anybody in the world to yeah. enable that type of content. When is this kind of product going to come out? What, who would buy this? Who would be buying this? We're going to come out with this second half of this year. Okay. And uh, importantly, it's going to. Is it going to look like this? Is this? This is. Uh, this is a. This is a, a working uh, developmental model. And you would that put it for. down. It would take pictures. It's not very heavy. That's no. No. You'd you'd have could, to buy you could mount it in any way you mount a GoPro. I mean, you, right. I don't know that you necessarily would be able to use it in, in this current iteration in, in every way you can use a GoPro today, because it's, it's still too big, it's still six yeah, cameras. Yeah, that, it's that still, on a helmet is a little No, money. no, it's still, it's still complex. But yeah. you know, uh, GoPro is a tool uh, um, used by professionals around the world for creating some of the most um, engaging professional content today. I mean, the Hero 3 won an Emmy. Mm -hmm. for enabling new perspectives in television. Mm -hmm. So GoPro's already widely used by professionals, and this is really gonna be most appealing for professional production companies, 
uh, for commercial purposes and by prosumers. Mm -hmm. We don't expect you know, the, the average um, consumer to go out and buy six GoPros in a, a spherical uh, mounting array rig to capture spherical content, although they will. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can imagine um, putting this at the, at the center of a table for a reunion or a wedding or something like that. It's going to enable some fabulous content that you're going to be able to go back and, and relive. But it's not until we make this much smaller, much more convenient, much lower cost that it's going to be adopted by the How much uh, the would this cost? Consumer. How much would this cost? Well, six Hero 4 Blacks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, you know $3,000 plus whatever we sell the, the, the mounting rig for. Right. So it's, it's more of a DSLR class uh, mm -hmm. uh, solution, which if you think about it, though, it's still a heck of a deal because not only would you be investing in a spherical, the world's most advanced spherical capture solution, you could also take the six GoPros out and use them as individual cameras, or you'd have three 3D cameras. And I think that that's something that's pretty interesting about a GoPro is it's the one camera that we know of that you can combine with like cameras to form new cameras. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a uh, So one of the things system. we also did is you took me up in a helicopter above the Golden Gate Bridge and under the Golden Gate Bridge. You tried to scare me. It didn't work even slightly. Um, but you, we flew there, and we had, a, we had a bunch of cameras all arrayed around it. And then mm -hmm. what I saw on an iPhone was astonishing, where you just, w what was going on? What happened was when you see it, any time you turned it, mm -hmm. um, it was as if you were looking above and below you. Yeah. Tell, explain what that was. Well, that was enabled by color. Right. Uh, a French company that we acquired earlier this year. Right. Um, just, uh, well, actually just closed. And um, they are the best in the world at um, stitching together <laughs> multiple video sources to form a spherical video or a spherical photo. Right. And then they have a fabulous player. Um, that enables you to view that content through a mobile device. Yeah. Uh, whether whether a, whether it's you didn't need a VR. No. Yeah, at and all. whether the content's on your device or whether it's streaming right. from the web, you can uh, view the content on your mobile device and, and move around that without touching the screen. Well, you can move it by touching the screen. Right. Or it's really great if you're sitting in a chair like this, and you can spin around. Right. And look at your world. And Believe you, you're the you, first you don't person have to ever do that. That's really cool. Do it again. You, you don't have to mount it on your head. Right. Uh, and so it's it's from what we've seen, it's the most convenient and immersive way to, on the fly, enjoy spherical. I content. also saw it in a VR setting too. Was that just an iPhone in front special. of you? Yeah. Well, you can drop a, your smartphone into cardboard uh, yeah. or uh, VR gear uh, or any uh, heads up dis virtual reality um, head mounted display yeah. and view it in that way too. But to be, to be fair, it's, it takes a bit of forethought to bring your viewer with you. Right. It's great if somebody shares some spherical VR content with you and, and using color eyes, which right. is the app, mm -hmm. which you know, all of you that want to take a look at uh, that video that we just shot of you, you can yeah. go, I, I believe it's going to yeah, be we'll up have at, our site at gopro.com forward slash spherical or your site, right. download the app, and, and it's, a, it's an incredible It was uh, sort of experience. surprising. It was, sort of, it was it's, quite surprising how good it was. It's really good. Um, so I want to talk about another product you're coming out with also, and then I want to know what, why you're doing all this. Drones. Explain are we coming your, out with the drones? Are you quad something or other? Quad? So... Um, do you guys all want GoPro to make a quadcopter? Oh, come on. Do you guys want GoPro to make a quadcopter? <laughs> OK. GoPro is making a quadcopter. All right. It's official. All right. OK. So no, what and, I, and, and uh, you may think that I'm joking. Uh, no, we thought it'd be uh, terrific here on Recode and with right. you to, yeah. to drop the news that we are officially yes. developing a quad. Yes, I know. I just dragged that out of you. Um, what? Um, uh, what? <laughs> I take credit when I do the good. I do the good kills, but not this one. Um, what? Uh, what? Explain what you're doing there. What is the quadcopter? Besides sounding pretty cool, and I have to buy it for my uh, children. It's, it's going to be extremely cool. Okay. Um, well. Quadcopters and the whole movement have a special place for us at GoPro because um, I was a huge uh, radio-controlled uh, plane enthusiast as a kid, mm -hmm. and I could never really get anybody involved in it with me because um, either it was too geeky or uh, took a lot of time to learn how to fly these things. You crash them all the time, mm -hmm. 
And uh, so I was really surprised um, to see how quickly the, the uh, general consumer was adopting quadcopters. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're expensive, they're not particularly easy to fly, although they're getting better. Um, and people would crash them and buy another one. Yes. And there's a viral sort of growth and awareness and adoption of the product, similar to GoPro, mm -hmm. being driven by a, a similar phenomenon. And that's the content that the quadcopter plus a GoPro enables. Right, which that, is these that, beautiful that, pictures above. My, my god, it's, in, yeah. it's incredible. And it, it's, it's enabled, quads plus GoPro have enabled some of the most it's been one of the most democratizing combinations in terms of enabling people to capture professional quality content and see themselves in their environment in a way that uh, they'd never seen before. It looks like you're in your own movie, professionally produced. And as a result, uh, we're seeing growth in the quad industry that reminds us of the early days of GoPro. Mm -hmm. And then we recognize that it's content that's driving uh, the sale um, of quads. Um, it seemed natural to us that we're in the Thank content enabling own. business. A quad represents, in some ways, the ultimate GoPro accessory. And because we're genuinely passionate about the space as consumers ourselves, we thought it made sense for us. All the all the you know rationale we needed to say, hey, okay, we're going to. So you want to make your own there. rather than just be attached to all the others. Yeah, I mean the the. the I think that it's it's a uh, core enough to our business that it makes sense for us to, to make our own. At the same time, um, we'll still be compatible with other uh, quads as long as they'll have us. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that you know a, the, the specific path that we may be going with our quad may be different from what other companies are doing. And right. consumers and professionals yep. may be looking for different alternatives. When are these coming fine. out? When is this quad coming out? Uh, first half of next year. First half of next year. And what will they cost? I can't. Uh, comment on that, but we're a uh, consumer-focused company. Um, although I'll say we're consumer-focused, but always with the requirement that everything we do is at a professional level, professional quality, whether it's the image quality our cameras capture mm -hmm. or the performance of, of our quad. But um, it's aimed at consumers. It's aimed at consumers. Aimed at the regular consumers. Yeah, and what's exciting, too, about uh, the quad opportunity is there's a number of um, related products uh, that uh, uh, go with that as well. Drone insurance? <laughs> wouldn't be a bad idea. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it's, as soon as you enable people to um, fly their camera around, mm -hmm. um, then it's, it, we believe that it sparks the imagination and that people are going to be looking to use uh, their, their GoPros in even more inventive ways. Right. And so it's us officially entering uh, the quad copter business has um, also opened up some new opportunities for us that we're really excited about. Okay, let's talk about what you're trying to do in media. And, and also I want to talk about what it's like, how long have you been public now? What's the? It's been It'll a, be a year, uh, a year this June. You're unusually tan for a CEO. I think only Richard Plepler reaches your levels of tan. I'm, I'm, half, I'm half Puerto Rican. Uh, oh, now you're making me feel bad. But you look great. You look healthy and. Oh, no, that wasn't, to me that wasn't meant to make you feel okay, bad. All right, okay. No, no, no. Um, but but you, um, <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. What are you uh, saying? Uh, well, diversity, great, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I love diversity. Um, uh, everyone's laughing backstage. <laughs> That's Mossberg back there. Um, what, what are you doing? First, let's talk about what it's like to be a CEO now. You've had an up and down thing. There's lots of people saying, oh, your business is under pressure from this, oh, under it's pressure here. Up. Right. Okay. Perception is that it's been up and down, but um, I'm in my. Well, it actually is up and down, like a quad. Well, the stock opposite, price, example. the stock price is up and down, but the business has always been. So why is phenomenal. that? What was the? What is going on now? What do they don't get about? Go. They're worried about all. You see all kinds of things. Is it going to continue? Is it going to be a fad? Sure. Is it going to be this? I think that that part of the the. Uh, the attraction to GoPro is the strength of the brand and the excitement around the business. And part of the concern um, investors have is the strength of the brand and the excitement around the business. Okay. Right? Because things that burn very brightly, we wonder how long can they keep burning? Right. Like so certainly it can't just keep going up and to the right. Right. Um, but to those of us who are on the inside, uh, you know, I, I'm in my 13th year uh, since I started GoPro. 
And these things become more obvious to you over time. Just like any subject matter, if the more that you're immersed in it, the more that it, 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 it consumes you, the more you can see the future, see around the corner, if you will, as to where this business is going. And so uh, if you work at GoPro, uh, you're very comfortable with our vision and, and uh, more than comfortable, you're very excited with our vision and, and where we see uh, the business going, what our potential is. If you're on the outside, you're wondering, is this a fad? Well, you're going flip camera, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, that was the same a, thing. That's a different product, but the devices market ex is exactly. Tough, we get, when, when we went on the road a year ago for the IPO, everybody asked us, are, is, it, "Is GoPro the next flip?" And the answer is really easy, no, because we enable a different use case. Well, the, yes would have been bad on a. On yeah, that a, wouldn't have worked. A, um, and, and in fact. You know, people said, "Well, uh, ha uh, what what happens when the smartphone right. really challenges you?" And the the answer is, "Well, we actually grew up during the era of the smartphone." Right. Right. It's so very different from the smartphone. We're, we're it's a very different use case. I mean, the smartphone is is the world's ultimate reactive capture device. Something is happening, and you reactively pull your smartphone out to document it. Right. But that is the same use case that. Uh, the camera, traditional camera, has always been addressing is one human filming another human or another thing happening, me filming you living your life. And the fundamental aha uh, realization that opportunity that has enabled GoPro to succeed as a business is that we recognize that there was an unaddressed use case which was allowing the individual consumer to turn the camera around and film themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. And in this age of user-generated content, um, the socializing of that content online, um, it's talk about good ti great timing. So do you imagine yourself a, a device company? Would you, I mean, you're making devices. You're making a quadcopter. You're making this thing. Um, are you a device company or a what? Content-enabling company. Oh, that's a new one. Okay, all right. We 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 really see ourselves. If you asked me four years ago, I would have said we're a device company. Right. And then um, shortly thereafter, we came to recognize that um, what was making GoPro so successful was not how great the device was, but was how great the content was that the device enabled. Right. And uh, what was going viral on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, wasn't talking about the device, it was talking about, did you Things see the latest captured. video? This right. is incredible. Right. And so uh, consumers were quick to see other people's great GoPro videos and then think, wow, I'd love to capture my life like that. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a, a viral model that is essentially the, the more cameras that we get out there in consumers' hands, the more great content they capture and share, the more they virally drive awareness of our so, business. So you, and it's, you, it's you hired Xander and others who, who were in the media area. Are you, a, are you the new YouTube? How do you, how do you look at it? And then how do you make money from that? No, we're, we're enabling some of the best content on YouTube. Okay. You know, that's how we see it. Why don't you have a YouTube, a GoPro network? Because everybody's watching YouTube. Okay. And so we see ourselves as a contributor to these existing megatrends. You know, YouTube uh, is a user-generated megatrend. You've got Facebook, Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and Instagram as these megatrends of socialization around content. Uh, you have the quad megatrend mm -hmm. that we see coming that is being driven by content, mm -hmm. right? You have the, uh, uh, a little bit further out there, virtual reality mega trend that is gonna be fueled by engaging Lots content. Lots of mega trends going on. You got it, and okay. so, be, but if you look at them, so these, these trends are all driven by engaging content. Right. And that we see ourselves enabling that content in, in, and contributing to it. We don't have to be the platform itself we can plug into the platform. Okay, and then how do you make money from that? Because I was talking to Ellen earlier today with Reddit, they create a lot of content that other people take advantage of. Yes. How do you, the company, is it just to sell more devices or do you see a business in your, you, you talked about it, but do you act, what is the business so, so of content? Stage, stage one is that we're currently in is to leverage that content uh, to drive awareness, enthusiasm, or products on our brand. 
-hmm. and sell more of our product. And when we do a better job of, of enabling people, not just to capture great content, but to offload it from their camera, get it in the cloud, give them easy edit tools and service options to help them go from an hour of footage over the weekend into a one minute video they can share with other people, we think that we can increase the pool of GoPro content out there by you know, 20, 30, 50 times. Then when we, get, when we get to that type of scale, then our ability to aggregate the best of that content and re redistribute that as entertainment programming is very significant. You know, already today, GoPro is the number one brand channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We're the number four brand on Instagram in terms of engagement, number six in terms of overall following, but number four in terms of engagement. And so all, you know, it's, the, it's this great proof of concept already that people love GoPro captured content mm -hmm. because it's some of the most interesting perspectives of our world we've ever seen and soon it's going to this, the skies. Mm -hmm. And so we think that we've got a, a bright future there in terms of maintaining that engagement and then with it comes the scale that you've got the GoPro channel programming right. that is, has more scale than it does today no, and then the ability to monetize that in other ways comes to us. But right. first and foremost, we first need to enable the content to then get it to scale. So would you to ever imagine yourself it. as a network? I, Evan called himself entertainment yesterday. Are you entertainment? We are entertainment. And it's it's the world's okay. I think it's the world's first. It's a little bit like Disney, mm -hmm. in how Disney produces fabulous movies that drive tons of interest and engagement around certain characters, and then they go and they commercialize that interest and engagement through toys, books. Uh, park visits, cruise, cruise yes. uh, vacations, et cetera. Similarly, we're in that business now where we're leveraging the content to drive the sale of our products. But uh, because people are watching GoPro content, not to learn about the product and decide whether they should buy or not, they're watching it for entertainment. Yeah. With that comes the opportunity to monetize that in a traditional sense. Last question, and we'll get to some questions from the audience. What have you done? Do you think you've been a good CEO this past year? And what, have, what would you correct about your CEO-ness? My CEO-ness? Right. Uh, I'd get around the, the company more. The, the hardest thing for me is um, uh, you know, having grown the, uh, the business from uh, you know, me uh, and, and on a card table at my dad's house to what it is today, we're over 1,200 employees. I feel like I've done a, a, a pretty good job of scaling because I got some great mentors along the way that made me, help me realize I just, I have to build a phenomenal team around me that makes my job a lot easier. And, but, but at the same time, um, it, it's, uh, it's hard for me to keep up with, you know, I, I remember when I knew everybody's name. So that's the weirdest Wait, part for me when I walk around the, the office and people are like, hey, Nick, what's up? And I'm just like, hey. That, that's, <laughs> you do this? That's, hey. Hey. I'm going to do that. That's challenging. Um, and that, that's, that's probably my biggest disappointment is that it's hard for me to cr go around my own business and know everybody the way that I want to. Mm -hmm. But um, I do feel like I'm doing a good job because I think that uh, we have a very clear vision for the business. Everybody at the business is very excited about it and doing a heck of a job executing against it. And that's my and job is to get everybody aligned what are you, and passionate. What are you frightened of? What do you, who do you imagine your competitor? Or what do you go, oh, this could be? Because uh, like, I wake up in a BuzzFeed sweat all the time. So what do you? What do you yeah. Um, uh, I, Shark I, videos now. I get, I get, uh, I, get uh, I, think, I think execution, do we? I'll tell you, I, was, I used to be more fearful before we were public than now. Mm -hmm. People say, why is that? I would say because of the quality, the, 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 the hires that we had to make and the upgrades across the whole company to get people in the business that could help us fully realize the vision. I'd say two years ago, we were a whole lot of dreaming and not enough doing, not enough execution. Doing. Everybody meant well. Thank you, George Bush. Yeah. But, uh, but now I'm happy to say with people like Tony Bates and Xander. So what are you and, scared and, of? You still have an answer yet. What, what are you worried about right now? Uh, it's more maybe that, that we don't execute fully on the vision. I, I, th I think basically the, the, the prize is ours 
to, to enable some of the greatest content, uh, consumer-generated content that's ever been and make it really easy for people to capture and share compelling professional quality content. And I think that if we execute on that vision in a timely manner, I don't think there's another company in the world that can, can achieve that. And under the brand umbrella that is GoPro that gets consumers so excited about it. What I'm afraid of is that we don't execute on that fast enough, that we leave the door cracked open for somebody else to get in there and actually give us a good run for the money. That would really disappoint me because when, you, when it's all there for you to, to realize it and, and, and realize the full vision for your business with almost no competition, I mean, how often does that happen? Mm -hmm. So if, if we don't achieve that, that's going to be very disappointing for me. Okay. Questions for Nick from the audience? Any questions? John? All right. Yeah? All right. You can always count on me, Karen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. I'm thrilled by this. Um, Nick, my, my question's about software. Uh, I'm a GoPro user, and the content, it turns out, is great. But sometimes, like, I hesitate to pull it out because I'm thinking about, okay, what am I going to have to do to get the content out of the camera? How much time is it going to take me? So w when you got your spherical array, when you do come out with your drone, it's going to it's going to mean you need even better software to help yeah. people to create compelling content out of these complex images that they get. So how do you think about standing up a consumer software organization that has good processes, uh, user interface expertise, all that stuff that you need? Because that's a massive task. That's what we're doing now behind the scenes. And that is when people ask me, how uh, are you going to go from selling you know, five plus million units a year, like we did last year, to selling 50 million units a year. Right. How are you going to do that? Yeah, how are you going to do that? Th that is all about the software experience. Mm -hmm. It's, we're, gonna, we're going to sell more devices by making a better device, for sure. But we believe that the, the secret to massively scaling adoption of GoPro, and most importantly, helping you and the rest of our customers, and myself included, realize the promise of why we bought a GoPro in the first place, which is that great piece of content that we can share and use to relive an experience, that's going to come through in a, a seamless experience where you come home from capturing a great weekend out with the family, you plug your GoPro into charge, it's cloud syncing all of your content, archiving it for you, you never have to touch the SD card, you never have to touch a USB cable, so that the next time you think about that weekend, you can launch the GoPro app, have instant access to all your content, so that importantly you can watch it, well, he, he or something, then become can... inspired to do something with it and share it. That, that, not to interrupt, but that, that, that is the future of, of the business. And I'm happy to say, you know, we're, we're in alpha uh, stage, uh, testing internally. Everybody in the company is using the early stage solution of what I'm talking about. It's phenomenal, and it's going to be totally game-changing. And I am our biggest critic in terms of this user experience. I have got three little boys. Mm -hmm. Them and my wife are all trapped on these growing towers of SD cards on my desk at home. And, and I, too, suffer from what you say. Sometimes it's, it's an anxiety of if I pull out my GoPro, mm -hmm. it's going to create more overhead for me to deal with. So in that vein, like a periscope is super easy. Now that's something that you look at, that live streaming. Yeah, you don't, well, you, the, the share is as it's happening, there's, there's no homework afterwards. Right. So. Are you worried about that? No, because just like with a, the difference between a smartphone and a uh, GoPro, there's good, different though. use cases. It could get pretty good, though. Yeah, and you know, you, you, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you can do with your GoPro uh, soon that you haven't been able to do yet. So. All right. Oh, another secret. Just really quick. I know yeah, software right. is I know software is hard. Any time horizon from when we might see it? I know it's in it's in alpha, but. All right. I got it. I, I can't I can't give a, a timeline, but I can tell you it's it's one of the top priorities within the company right now. They're going to make it easy. And why we brought on people Super like Tony quick. Bates to help us uh, okay. get it sorted. There seems to be some growing uh, opportunity among the public these days, among drones of any sort, uh, because people don't seem to understand it at all and tend to see it as dangerous. Is there a role the industry could pay in both setting public uh, intention and also the police lawmakers to, for people to understand what's safe and what isn't safe? Sure. 
absolutely. I mean, GoPro is involved with a small UAV coalition to do just that and help uh, educate policymakers on the opportunities that both to be gained and lost by overregulation of uh, drones, quadcopters, and the like. And I think that, like anything new, uh, where there are perceived risks and unknowns, f fear is the natural first human reaction. Well, also a drone dropping on your head. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, th there's a lot of things. Uh, our, our belief is that the benefits far outweigh the negatives. Well, you would, though. <laughs> well, but I mean, you can look at you can look at so many things. I mean, the automobile industry; these yeah. automobiles are dangerous as all get out. Like how many people those kill a year? Yeah. Yes. But the benefits of allowing people to drive automobiles in mass on the roads is obviously outweighs the. So drones don't kill people. People driving drones kill people. Right. right. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stephen. Um, last question. I, I I'll hit you with this. Uh, this is like a game. But, it, but if you had a GoPro on your car, yes, you could determine what happened and then. That is true, the, 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 video, the, the, the whole ch movement of video. Diversity, very quickly. Sorry, Stephen, we don't have time. Um, uh, what are your thoughts? Is Silicon Valley a meritocracy? What needs to be done super well, quickly? Well, I, I, I can, let, let me just speak for GoPro. Right. And um, I feel really good about the diversity of the company. I, it was a joke before about me being Puerto Rican, but okay, I, right, I am good. Puerto well, Rican. I don't know, I'm not trying to And uh, you know, I, I experienced, um, uh, I experienced some things when I was younger that make me very sensitive to it, and I'd like to to I'd like to feel that GoPro is is actually a good uh, uh, manifestation of of. Uh, what did you experience? I'm just curious. Well, no, I mean, like I don't, don't want to get the tallest, whitest guy. Go, I've go ever pro, seen. go pro. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but but it's what's in here. Okay, right? it's all my right. perspective. Okay, all right. And and to be to be honest, it's not something I consciously. Right. Uh, uh, Manufactured at GoPro that we were going to be a diverse organization, but when I, when I think back to the early days of GoPro, I mean the first ten, ten employees, I think there were only like two white people in the, in the business, mm -hmm. and uh, and as it works with organizations, uh, when you get great people in, they hire in right. uh, like great hires beget hire great people. And when I look across GoPro now, I mean and I've been thinking about it in, in uh, preparation to talk to you. Uh, we have an incredibly d diverse workforce. The one area where we are really lacking, um, another topic, is uh, executive women and executive leadership. Yes, it's we had been a, a trend for we, some we, reason. We, we had a fabulous, well, and that's another thing I didn't really think about. So we did, we've done well in the diversity front. Right. We have done poorly on the um, uh, women and okay. leadership positions. We definitely have some, I mean, our general counsel, our head of, uh, of um, of uh, brand mm -hmm. design, um, who I work with really closely. And Nina Richardson was our COO mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years, and she was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and it was actually having her there made me realize how important it is to have women around the decision-making table, especially when you're in a consumer products company, because at least half of your market are women, and if it's a bunch of dudes like me sitting around the table, you know, throwing darts at wondering how we're gonna address that market, that obviously doesn't work that well. So that's something that we need to address. Great. Nick Woodman and his spherical camera. Thank you. Thank you.